I was uh, privy, I was made privy to a headline, to an article that I had no idea came out a couple of days ago. And I'm thinking, what in the world? I had no idea. What is this? Well, now, first of all, we understand. Now, I say many of us understand that there was a special Hanukkah rededication or dedication, not rededication, but a dedication of the third temple altar that took place just last week. Um, I was aware of this. This is not the, you know, this is not the article I'm talking about. It's, it's an update that I'm talking about that I'm going to get to right now. But um, this took place, and uh, uh, it, 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 it was, um, it, you know, many people were excited about it. It is biblical. It is prophetic. And uh, if you did not know that this even took place, let me at least catch you up. On Monday, uh, the very last day of Hanukkah, the Sanhedrin called out about 70 nations to join in what they called the consecration of the altar for the third temple. And it was a full dressed reenactment of the daily sacrifice that was held and representative of a South American nation who attended, uh, was a recipient of a miraculous fulfillment of the messianic promise of the ingathering of the exiles. Now, this is what was reported through breaking Israel news. Uh, first, uh, I say first, it's really not in any order, but let me direct your attention. I ask that you please have your word. If you do not have your Bible, quickly go get it because I want to take you to a few portions of scripture on this unscheduled broadcast that uh, the Lord has ordained for us tonight. Go with me to the book of Daniel very quickly, please. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, because folks, we are living in the last days, we are living in the 1159, 59 prophetic time clock of God. Again, if you're just tuning in, I got some updates concerning the special Hanukkah dedication of the third temple altar that just took place on the last day of Hanukkah, where the Sanhedrin over in Jerusalem, that's part of the Temple Institute, invited 70 nations to join in what they call the consecration of the altar for the third temple. And it was a fully dressed enactment or reenactment of the daily sacrifice. And it was held uh, in, 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 in Jerusalem. Uh, it was a very big deal. Uh, but there's a portion of scripture that this really is coming very close to fulfillment. Was this scripture fulfilled uh, that day? Uh, just again, just last week. Uh, I'll tell you, it's a type and shadow of it being very close to being fulfilled. Uh, again, Daniel chapter 9, verse Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of, of, of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. Now, uh, there was a, uh, uh, a constructed altar, okay? The altar was nine feet uh, square and five feet high, and it was constructed of aerated concrete. And they claimed the Sanhedrin, the Temple Institute, just this past Monday or last week, again, it was the last day of Hanukkah, they claimed that this particular material and the way that the altar was built was ruled to be fit for the use in the official third temple that they already have plans to make very, very soon. It really is just a matter of time. It really is just the Lord abstaining this for now, but it's it's already here, okay? They, 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 are, they, they are clearly telling us that the Antichrist is going to be unveiled very soon. Now, they're not calling him the Antichrist. Right now, they're, they are calling him the Messiah, the people in the nation of Israel. These are not Messianic Jewish believers. I'm talking about those who, who do not believe that Jesus is a Messiah. They're still waiting for the Messiah, and they're claiming that they are ready for the Messiah, and what they're going to get is the Antichrist. Well, you had Rabbi Baruch Kahani, who served as the high priest, instructing the other priest in this fully dressed reenactment ceremony of the Third Temple that just took place last week, uh, you know, he, he was telling them their functions. And just, just as it was in Solomon's temple, I'm hoping this connection is coming in very clear because it's such an important broadcast. 
and just God is good and his mercy endures forever. Just as in Solomon's temple, the different tasks that were to be performed were assigned by lottery. So they did this thing as, as close to the Bible in the Old Testament as was possible. So you had the priests that wore biblically accurate garb appropriate for use in the, t in the temple. They had incense uh, that was made for the reenactment. Uh, they had 11 ingredients that were required for the temple use. And um, they were just, I mean, they were very serious about this. Now, this is not the update, okay? I'm just kind of laying the groundwork right now because many of you did not even know that there was a dedication, a special Hanukkah dedication of the third temple altar that took place just last week. Now, in the midst of all of this, okay, in the midst of all of this, there was blood sacrifice, Okay, there was a shedding of blood that took place outside of uh, uh, the actual, uh, you know, dedication that took place, okay, in Jerusalem. The municipal authorities did not permit uh, the sheep. They had a sheep that they actually slaughtered. They, they did not permit it, though. The municipal authorities uh, did not uh, allow it to be slaughtered on site. Uh, so they had to find another location. But they did, and they slaughtered, they shed the blood of an animal. Dear folks, listen, this is not okay what took place. This is blasphemy. And we're going to talk about this tonight because there are many Christians who believe that this was good. They celebrated what took place. And this was not celebratory. This was a major sign of the end times and, 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 and an indicator as to the soon uh, unveiling of the Antichrist. So again, the municipal authorities did not permit a sheep to be slaughtered on site. So one was slaughtered, though, just off site. They just went to another location. This is confirmed. The sections of the meat of the lamb that was, or of the sheep, excuse me, that were arranged on the ramp leading up to the altar in the ritually prescribed manner, one piece was thrown onto the fire on the altar to be burned completely. This is such blasphemy because Jesus is the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. And I'll prove it to you here in Scripture in a moment. I didn't mean to kick the camera, and I apologize. About 150 people were in attendance. Uh, uh, you know, this is in conjunction with the 70 nations that participated in this ceremony. And um, uh, you had the ambassador of Guatemala that was there. Again, 70 nations were present. What What is that all about, Right. Well, the ambassador of Guatemala uh, was a guest of honor at the ceremony, and he said, this is truly a historic moment. He said, my government is pleased to be partners with the Sanhedrin and with Israel in bringing the Messiah. In bringing the Messiah. This was not a representative of the nation of Israel. This was the ambassador of Guatemala. Okay, so we need to see the big picture here, folks. We're not just looking at the nation of Israel, still waiting for the Messiah that came well over 2,000 years ago. They purposely, the Sanhedrin, the Temple Institute purposely invited 70 nations that knew that they too are waiting for the coming Moshiach, or again, the Messiah. They don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Now, uh, you had, uh, 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 there's so much with this and I'm trying not to get too, uh, too you know, too, you know, to, to just get too detailed here because it's supposed to be a quick broadcast, but according to the rabbi, this is Rabbi Hilal Weiss. He's a spokesman for the Sanhedrin. He noted that it was highly symbolic that such a revelation should come about at the dedication of the altar. He said, we are on the cusp. We are on the cusp of the revelation of the Moshiach or the Messiah, okay? One of the functions of the Messiah, he said, is the ingathering of the exiles. This is not nearly merely this is not merely people deciding to come to the nation of Israel. It is a miraculous process, which is what we saw here. It is God revealing things that are hidden. Hidden Jews, hidden connections to Israel, love for Hashim, which is God, literally the name of God, Hashim for Hebrew, that has been hidden away and not seen since all 70 nations came together to pray to the one God in Jerusalem. Now, again, this happened 
on the last day of Hanukkah, last week, on Monday, in the nation of Israel, in Jerusalem, 70 nations gather in. Sanhedrin, they had a full dress reenactment. They, 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 they consecrated the altar for the third temple that is not yet built. The ambassador of Guatemala is in agreement that they too, as a nation, is waiting for the Messiah to come. Though the believers in Christ, we understand that the Messiah has come. The suffering servant, Jesus the Christ. The prophet Isaiah declares the coming of the Messiah that was already fulfilled in the fullness of time over 2,000 years ago. So we see something happening here. Many Christians in the body of Christ, there were Christians that were present at this dedication. That they are out of order. They're not, you know, they, now they, they may claim that they're of one mind with the Jewish people here, but they're not. They're out of order. They're out of mind. Do I dare say they're out of their mind? They, they, they're saying, oh yes, the Messiah is going to come. The Messiah is going to come. And they're declaring it's the second coming of Jesus, but it's not. What they're going to get is the Antichrist. And I'm going to prove it here. Go with me very quickly to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 3, because we're told a warning in the word of God. We're told a warning by the Holy Spirit spoken through his apostle, through, the, through, through, through an apostle of the Lord, the apostle Paul. The following, let no one deceive you by any means. Let no one deceive you. That includes the Sanhedrin. That includes the ambassadors of the 70 nations. That includes the people who are in, 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 in working with the third temple or the temple institute. That includes the Kohanims that stand that stood in front of the altar that were constructed for the use in the third temple. That includes the rabbis. That includes all of these people. Let no one deceive you by any means, we're warned. For that day, talking about the day of the Lord, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Hear the word of the Lord, please, because many, many are tuning in right now and you think... You think that the next great event is going to be the coming of Jesus Christ. And make no mistake about it, the day of the Lord is at hand. Make no mistake about it, Jesus Christ himself said, when you, be, when you see these things even begin to happen, look up, lift up your head for your redemption draws nigh. Make no mistake about it, Jesus Christ himself tells us in the book of Revelation, behold, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to those according to their works. Make no mistake about it, Jesus Christ is coming, and that very soon. But Jesus also tells us that as in the days of Noah were, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. He told us that things are going to take place in succinct order before his coming. He said, I'm going to tell you signs that will be indicative of my coming before I come. And one of the signs is what's called the abomination of desolation. And we're told... In the word of God, in the gospel of Matthew chapter 24, let no man deceive you by any means is the very first words of Jesus. And then when it gets to the portion of scripture where it talks about the abomination of desolation, it says, let him who reads understand. Let him who read understand. Well, understand what, Lord? Well, understand the portion of scripture I'm about to share with you right now in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 in verse 3. This is what we are to understand. Hear the word of the Lord. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The day of the Lord, the second coming of Jesus Christ is one and the same. The second day, uh, uh, the, the second coming of Jesus Christ and the day of the Lord is one and the same. It's not two separate events. Let no one deceive you by any means for the day. What day? The day of the Lord, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Are we on the same page? That day, the second coming. What we're all looking forward to as believers, as the body of Christ, we're looking forward to Jesus coming again, right? Well, he's coming very soon. He's coming very soon. But listen, we're told to not let anyone deceive us by any means. Okay? Don't let anyone deceive you by any means. For that day, the second coming of Jesus Christ will not come. Will not come unless the falling away comes first. Listen, there's an order to this. There's an order to this. And we have to be privy as a body of Christ as to what is expected to come in the order of time 
by the word of God himself so that we are not deceived. We are told, do not let anyone deceive you. The, the Holy Spirit is speaking right now. He spoke this word to the church of Thessalonica through the apostle Paul, and he's speaking it to us right now one last time. He says, listen, let no one deceive you by any means. For before that day comes, before the second coming of Jesus Christ, that day, the second coming of Jesus Christ will not come, will not come, will not come unless or until the falling away comes first. The falling away is a apostasy of the faith. People are going to be abandoning the faith in Jesus Christ. Why? Why would people do that? Why would there be a gray falling away? Why? Well, I'll tell you why, because it tells us in the, in the very next portion here in the same verse, it says here, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. The man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition. The man of sin is not Jesus Christ. The son of perdition is not the lamb of God. The man of sin, the son of perdition is none other than the antichrist. The Antichrist. And the Antichrist, when he comes, people are going to be deceived. Those building the third temple, those that have already consecrated the altar. Listen, I just told you the report right now. You have Rabbi Baruch Hani serving as a high priest. You have 70 nations that joined in the consecration of the altar for the third temple. They had a full dress reenactment. You have the ambassador of Guatemala for crying out loud saying, listen, we're with the nation of Israel. We're waiting for the Messiah to come. Meaning that they don't recognize that the Messiah has already come over 2,000 years ago. And yes, Jesus Christ is coming, but they're not looking for Jesus. They know who Jesus is. They blaspheme him. They say, no, we don't believe Jesus is, is, is a Messiah. We believe he was actually a, a, a crazy man. And they call him all sorts of other things that I'm not going to say here on this broadcast. I'm not going to say period. They're not looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ. They're looking, and they're not going to call him the Antichrist, but that's who they're, gonna, that's who they're looking for is the Antichrist. But they're going to call him the Messiah. And they're going to be deceived. Now, how many of you remember the headline, the article that came out uh, uh, about a couple of weeks ago? And, you know, we reported it here at Open Your Eyes, people. And I wish I wish I would have I wish I would have printed it out. And I, I don't have it printed out. And I could probably see if I could quickly look it up here on on my Facebook page. There was a sign. OK, a sign at the Temple Mount. OK. This uh, happened on November 1st, just a few weeks ago, and it says the following, a snake, this is crazy stuff, th th this is crazy, crazy stuff, okay, a snake wriggled out from between the stones of the western wall in search, uh, you know, well, it, it, it says, you know, it came out, and, 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 and they claim the, the, uh, 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 the Jewish people, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the Sanhedrin, the Temple Institute, they all believe that when the snake, there was a literal snake that came out of the temple or that came out of the Western Wall on November 1st. When the snake came out, they said, wait a minute, this is a message. This is a message straight from Jewish teachings. Now, it's not from the Bible, folks, okay? Remember that, okay, I, I got to break something else down to you real quick. I'm sure some of you know this, but not everybody there's some witchcraft that happens. There's some witchcraft teachings. There's some mystical teachings that, that some Jewish folks are, are really involved in. And I'm not getting, I'm not going to get all into it. Okay. But there's some mystical teachings that they believe that connect, uh, the snake as a harbinger of the Messiah. Okay. So when this literal snake not just popped his head out, but literally came slithering out of the, of the wall, of, of, of the Western Wall, just November 1st. And, it, you know, they said, wait a minute, this is a sign. This is a sign, and, and, and we're going to see it as a fact that, uh, you know, the Messiah is about to come. Now, who, who do we know is a snake? The Bible tells us who the snake is. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that the snake is a serpent, the devil. Okay? The devil himself, Apollyon, we're told in the word of God that, uh, uh, it, well, it says here, Revelation chapter 20, 
Verse 2, he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years. So, you know, this sign, the literal snake that slithered out of the Western Wall back on November 1st, 2018, was literally a sign, and it was from the enemy, saying, listen, I'm about to appear on the scene very soon, and, and this is going to be my casa, this is going to be my landing spot right here, that that Western Wall, and, and now what, okay, so now what, that was on November 1st, December 10th, they did a, a, a special Hanukkah dedication of the Third Temple, Again, they, they invited 70 nations who, who are still, they believe, uh, you know, the Messiah hasn't come yet, so they're waiting for the Messiah to come. The Sanhedrin, they, they had a full dress reenactment. They slaughtered a sheep. They shed blood. They shed blood over the altar. That was not, it was, it was literal, folks. It was not allegorical. It wasn't symbolic. It wasn't fake blood. It was not a fake animal. It was a real blood, real animal. Okay, now first, I, 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 not first, I keep on saying first, I don't mean to say first, I'm already past first. Let's go back very quickly to 2 Thessalonians, because right now, again, as a church, as a body of Christ, we have to be privy to the times in which we're living in. Uh, before the day comes, before the second coming of Jesus Christ, we're told right here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, that the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, first. First, there's going to be a great falling away, and then the man of sin, the son of perdition, is revealed. The reason why the great falling away is going to happen, people are going to abandon the faith. The falling away is apostasy in the Greek, meaning, meaning a literal abandonment of the faith. They're going to abandon it. They're going to cast it off. They're going to have it, such hatred towards the faith of God. Why? Because uh, the man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition. And he, it says here in verse four, 4, he will oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And that's why it's going to be a great falling away. People of the faith of Jesus Christ is going to believe that the man of sin is Jesus. Jesus. Isn't that crazy? But the thing is, is that he's going to look like Jesus. He's going to sound like Jesus. He's going to talk and walk like Jesus. But the thing, the, the problem with all of that is that he's not Jesus. But he won't go as far as saying that He's Jesus. And not only will he call himself Jesus, he will call himself all religions. He will call himself all faiths. He will call himself all gods. He's going to say to the Buddhists, listen, you were praying to Buddha. I'm, I'm Buddha. He's going to say to those who worship Krishna, listen, you, you know, you were wanting to be enlightened and, and, you know, study the teachings of Krishna. I am he. He's going to tell, you know, those who worship Satan and, and, you know, to the Luciferians, oh, you were, uh, you know, calling on me and I'm the one who empowered you to make my way sure. And you were like the, you know, the John the Baptist of this age and, and here I am. So, you know, I'm the one, I'm, I'm coming the flesh. And he's going to tell the Christians, he's going to tell the Jewish people. He's gonna, well, first he's going to tell the Jewish people, you were waiting for the Messiah to come. I'm here. I finally arrived. And he's going to call Jesus a fraud. He's going to call Jesus Christ of Nazareth a fraud. And then he's going to tell the Christians, listen, you've been praying to Jesus. I'm the one. I've come in the flesh. And he's going to call Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who came over 2,000 years ago, the true suffering servant, the true lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. He's going to call him a fraud. And he's going to say all sorts of other things. He's going to blaspheme Jesus. He's going to blaspheme God himself. He's going to blaspheme all of heaven, the Bible tells us in Revelation 13. And people are going to fall away because they're going to say, wait a minute, truly, this must be the power of God. Truly, this must be God himself because he hasn't been struck down by lightning. He's blaspheming all of heaven. He's blaspheming Jesus Christ, the son of God. He's blaspheming everything. And he's still, he's, he, he's blaspheming everyone. He's blaspheming God. He must be. He has the audacity to do all that and not be struck down by lightning. And not only that, now he's going to call down fire from heaven. Only Elijah the prophet was able to do that. And didn't Jesus say, well, you know, or, you know, didn't the scripture say? That he's going to, you know, uh, you know, the scripture says that Elijah is going to come in the last days. Maybe this is Elijah. Maybe this is the very power of God. Listen, the Bible tells us he's going to call down fire from heaven. Read it in your Bible in Revelation chapter 13. And it says here, this man of sin, the son of perdition, will oppose and exalt himself. No one's going to need to exalt him. He's going to be so pompous in his speech. He's going to have the audacity. He's going to, have, he's going to be like fearless. People are going to be drawn in by his fearlessness. People are going to be drawn in by his suavemente, his charisma. And they're going to say, why? Because he's going to exalt himself above all that is called God or that is even worshipped. Again, he's going to declare himself every religion, every faith, every God. He's going to say, listen, you pray to those things. I'm it. I've come in the flesh. This is the next big thing, the next big event on the calendar, folks. Church, are we ready? Are, we, are you ready? 
Are you ready? Do you know your God so that you will carry on, so that you will do great exploits? I'm going to tell you something. If you don't know God, you're going to think that the man of sin, the son of perdition is God. If you don't know God, you're going to think the man of sin, the son of perdition is God. The Bible tells us in the book of, uh, uh, in, in, in the book of Daniel, <clears throat> chapter 11, in the book of Daniel, chapter 11, that those who know their God will, 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 will do great exploits. It says more, and I got to make sure I read it in context. Let me read it in context. Let me just read it to you. I got my Bible right here. Why play games? No, I'm not playing games. I'm not playing games. Daniel. Daniel, listen, I'll tell you like it is, folks. <laughs> Okay, it, it shocks some people because I'll come out at you and say, you know, what I'm going to say. And they're like, well, you're going to say that? Yeah, I am. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Okay, so I'm going to bring to you the word of the Lord, right? Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. The Bible tells us very clearly. It says here in verse, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll read it in con. No, I'll, I'll just go straight to the point here. Verse 32. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. Talking about the Antichrist. Talking about the man of sin, the son of perdition. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. The people who know their God, do you know God? We have to know God in these last days. We have to know him. We have to know his presence. We have to know his face. We have to know his spirit. We have to know his word. We have to know him. Because if you don't know him, you're going to think the man of sin, the son of perdition is God. Because I'm going to tell you something, that's who they're waiting for right now. The Sanhedrin, the 70 nations, the ambassadors, the rabbis, the Temple Institute, oh, many Christians, many Jewish folks. There, and it's not just the Jewish people. Again, 70 nations. These were not 70 just tossing the air, picking a lottery. Okay, we're going to invite Guatemala type of nations. They picked them purposely. These nations are also waiting for the Moshiach. They're waiting for the Messiah as well. They don't believe Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And there are Christians who are trying to justify what took place on Hanukkah. There are Christians who went to this temple dedication and trying to justify, well, that, you know, yeah, they don't believe Jesus is the Messiah, but, you know, Jesus Christ is going to come again, and he's going to come a second time, so that's who they're going to really get. And, and you know, they're going to they're gonna realize very soon that, it, you know, Jesus is, is, is a Messiah. But, no, they're not going to realize that. They're not going to realize that because who they're going to get is going to be the Antichrist. And they're going to be Christians. They're going to believe a lie. They're going to exchange the truth for a lie. They're going to say, wait a minute, truly this is God. Truly this is the very power of God himself. And it says here, verse 8, verse 8 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, and then the lawless one. Whenever you hear the lawless one, whenever you hear the man of sin, the son of perdition, they're all one and the same. Okay? That's the Antichrist. That's the Antichrist. Okay? It says here, then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So that tells us right there that the Antichrist will be here first before Jesus' second coming. Besides the fact that it confirms in chapter in, in, in verse 3 of the same portion of scripture we just read it. But here it is, a double confirmation, right? Where it is being confirmed is being confirmed that the lawless one will be revealed, verse 8, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. But remember, let no man deceive you by any means. For the, that day, the day of the Lord, the second coming of Jesus Christ will not come unless the falling away comes first and then the man of sin, the son of perdition, is revealed. It's not going to be back to back, although it's going to happen very quickly, okay? Antichrist is unveiled first. Check this out. Jesus is not going to come the very next day. He's coming very quickly, though. When's he going to come? Well, we know times and seasons, right? We know what the Word of God tells us. And the book of Daniel tells us that the Antichrist will rule and reign for what's called a time, times, and a half a time. A time, times, and a half a time. Okay, so he's going to be on the scene for a little bit. You know, many, many, and I'm not here to debate, it, and that's fine. M many believe that the Antichrist will rule and reign for seven full years. The first three and a half years, uh, well, actually, he's going to cut a covenant. He's going to cut a, a, a contract, a, a, a peace deal uh, with the nation of Israel, more than likely with the 70 nations that were in attendance with the altar dedication, uh, you know, just last week. And, of course, the enemies of the nation of Israel and really the whole world, okay? He's going to cut a covenant of peace and he's going to declare a so-called peace and safety. But the Bible tells us that when they, when they say peace and safety, then what? Then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. So what happens? He cuts a, 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 a peace deal, so-called peace deal with the nation of Israel and all these other nations. And, 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 and not just with the nations, but the Kohanim and with the rabbis and with the Sanhedrin and, and, and the Temple Institute. And they're going to say, listen, 
Have, you know, have at it. Have your temple, have your altar dedication, have your consecration, do the shedding of blue, you know, of, of, of bulls and goats, do your thing, right? Because we're all now peace and safety. But then the Bible tells us in the book of Daniel that the Antichrist is going to suddenly cut it right in the middle. Three and a half years of false peace and security. Everybody's happy and honky dory and oh, everybody's celebrating. Oh, yeah. And then right in the middle. He's going to declare himself. He's going to, after all this said and done and the temple's up and everybody's happy and, and, and stuff, the Antichrist, the man of sin is going to be so jealous. He's going to want to have that worship that the, that, that the bull is getting or that God himself is getting, but God is rejecting because he already sent his only begotten son, Jesus, into the world as a suffering servant, as a lamb of God that was slain. That three and a half years into, he's going to cut it off. He's going to say, listen. Listen, listen. Stop the sacrifices. Stop the presses. Stop everything that you're doing. This is what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, that he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, in the middle of the week, that's three and a half years. One week is seven days. Each year represents, or each day represents a year in this portion of scripture. Although we know in 2 Peter, the Bible says that a day is like a thousand years unto the Lord and a thousand years unto a, a, a day. But here we're not talking about the Lord. We're talking about the Antichrist, the man of sin that's under perdition. So if he could try to pose himself as God. If he can try to pose himself as God, he know he can't make a day as a thousand years and a thousand years to a day. So he's going to try to come as close as he can. So we'll make a day onto a year and a year onto a day. So he's going to do a seven year peace agreement. And right in the middle, right in the middle of the week, he shall bring it into sacrifice and offering. Why? Because it says here on the wing of abominations and on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate. And that's him. Why? What happens? Because it says here what's going to happen. Verse four, he will oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped or that he sits, he sits, he sits, he sits as God. The word sit is key. He's going to sit in the temple of God right here. He sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. How is he going to show him? This thing so rich of revelation and understanding. We got to get this right now. We got to get this because this is not something that may happen. They already did the dedication of third temple altar. They already did this last week. I have an update. The update is this, folks. The update is this. Right now, you have a rabbi. You already know. Now, listen, many of us know that they already have plans being drawn up for the third Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Okay? The temple institute in, 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 in the nation of Israel is the one who, who's leading all of this. Okay? And they already have the plans. They're saying, listen, just let us know the thumbs up. Okay? They need their sign. They need their sign from their mystical teachings or what have you. It's not the word of God, folks, okay? They need their sign. And when the sign tells them basically, okay, build the third temple, they, they claim it's only going to take six months. Now, I don't know how accurate that is. I don't know how accurate that is, but they know. So if they say it's going to be six months, then, I mean, by golly, it's going to be six months. But the point is here is that they already, already have plans being drawn up for the third Jewish temple in Jerusalem. And they say temple tools are being recreated. The animals that could be used in sacrifice are being bred, such as the red heifer. And the altar recreation is already underway. And now, listen, now there's a plan to create a golden crown for the Messiah's arrival in Jerusalem. Church, they're ready for the Messiah's arrival in Jerusalem. They're ready for it. They're, they're saying, listen, everything's ready. They're crying out as they're going back and forth at the, at the Western Wall and they're praying their prayers. They're crying out for the Messiah. They're not crying out to Jesus, folks. They're not crying out for Jesus Christ. They're crying out for a whole other person here. And they're making ready. Their faith is in their action. And not only that, there's a stirring in their spirit that there is an expectation of something coming. And not just in their spirit, understand that we all have this stirring right now. But if you have ears to hear what the spirit of the living God is saying, then you understand we're not talking about the, uh, uh, you know, I mean, again, we know Jesus Christ is coming very soon. We get this. We get this. As a matter of fact, you need to get saved because you really don't know how long, how much more longer you have. Okay. If you're tuning in and you're not saved, you need to be born again. The day of the Lord is at hand. But you can't say, well, I'm just going to get saved when I'm on my deathbed or I'll get saved when I see the Antichrist being unveiled. People speak so silly nowadays. I'll just get saved when I see the devil unveiled. When I see the Antichrist, I'll be, the, I'll be able to know it because he'll have the pitchfork and the horn sticking out of his head. No, you, you, he's not going to look like the devil. You don't even know when your own kids is playing a prank on you, but you think you'll be able to know when, when, when you'll be able to know the Antichrist when you see him. No, you won't. 
No, you. It's gotten so crazy nowadays. Listen, the, the scene is so crazy that there are men that have gotten sex surgeries. Sex surgery. They, they have sex change operations that they look like a full-blown woman. And they're on dating sites. Please, please be weary about dating sites. D don't go on them. Don't go on them, okay? Please don't, in Jesus' name, because it's gotten, it's gotten kooky. It's gotten kooky. You, you think, oh, she's a bombshell, and she's a dude. Oh, you think he's a hottie, and he's not a hottie, he, he's a she. Because now there are women getting sex change operations to look like a dude. I mean, it's, it's full blown. Uh, you know, my friend, Sister Floor, I, I went to her church, uh, uh, you know, last week, and, and we were there, and we preached, and it was very exciting and fun and blessed. But she had a testimony or she, she invited a man who had a testimony, and I wasn't there to see it because it was weeks prior to me getting there. Um, and it, he had a testimony, and you know you saw him as a man, but his testimony is that he used to be a woman. And now, of course, he was never officially a woman, but he had the surgery and everything. And he had the before picture, and it was like, it looked like, uh, you know, it looked like, America's, it looked like America's Next Top Model. And to many in the world, oh wow, she's a bombshell. Oh, she's beautiful, look. But it was a dude! But you think you'll be able to know when the Antichrist, you think, you really think you're going to know who the Antichrist is. So you're going to hold off giving your life to Jesus. Stop. You're deceived already. Now, I just break that spirit of deception off of you right now in the name of Jesus. And, and the Father right now just tugging at your heart to get saved. You got to get saved. You got to get saved. Listen, this whole thing is spiritual. Okay? And, and, and you can't fight spiritual battles. You, you will not be able to stand in the evil day having done all to stand in your own flesh, in your own strength, in your own wisdom, in your own knowledge. First of all, the Bible tells us that we're not even to lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways to acknowledge him and he will direct our paths, number one. Number two, we're told that we're to walk by faith and not by sight. You can't even walk by faith unless you believe that God is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Because we're told in the word of God that faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that faith only comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you're not saved, you don't, you don't even have the faith of God. You're not going to, you, you know, you're going to fall away. You're going to believe a lie. I, ha I had a third point and it'll come up. But the point is that you need to get saved. You need to be born again because we're here already. This is not something that's about to happen. I'm not giving you a possibility of what may happen. This has already happened. This is last week's news. And right now I'm giving you the update. The update is that they have a campaign right now launched to create a golden crown, a gold crown for the Messiah that they say it's coming. They're not saying, listen, if he comes, we're hoping he comes. We're not sure he may come. No, he's saying, they're saying already, listen, we are creating a golden crown for the Messiah's arrival in Jerusalem. Okay? This is the same verbiage that a mother would do when, they, when she prepares her nursery because she's nine months in and uh, the baby's about to come in the uh, next few days. So she's doing little things in the nursery to make sure everything's good to go. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just... Readying for the arrival of my child here. It's the same verbiage. It's the same, it's the same speak. This is crazy. This is, uh, to me, this is stunning. Okay, if you're not moved by this, I, I, somebody needs to, I don't know, uh, slap you, throw some cold water on your face, you know? D d wake up. Wake up, because this is, to me, this is stunning. This is crazy. I, I, I don't mean to use the word crazy, but it is. It says here, it's, ay, ay, ay. in regards to this golden crown for Messiah, real quick. Again, they, they've launched to create gold crown for Messiah. It says here that uh, Rabbi Yosef Berger, he is, uh, he, 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 he is from, it says here, Rabbi Yosef Berger of King David's tomb on Mount Zion, he has created an online presence to solicit support for the project of creating a golden crown for the Messiah. Berger, who reports being a direct descendant, of King David told breaking Israel news that the founding of the state of Israel in the six day war were miracles that makes Israel of today in the beginning of the messianic era. And we get that. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the recreation of the nation of Israel, not only is it a miracle, it's a Bible prophecy. The mere fact that they won the six day war, massive, massive miracle. I mean, that, that, that was by the hand of God. If you don't know the history of the six day war, please uh, get it because it's powerful. So make no mistake about it. Yeah, of course. It is definitely, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, 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 it's major. Uh, it's, it's by the mighty hand of God. But all that they're doing here, it is writing for the Antichrist. And 
I'm crying out to the Lord that for the people that are that are right now that they're not ready to um, uh, to, to 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 not be deceived. They they they're, they're going to be deceived. Many in the church are going to be deceived. There are there are many church leaders that are part of this. And this has a spirit behind it. It's an antichrist spirit. None of it's cute. None of it's innocent. The Bible tells us in the same portion of scripture in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, this time in verse 9, that the coming of the lawless one. Now we know that Jesus Christ is coming. The day of the Lord is at hand, right? The second coming of Jesus Christ. Well, guess what? There's again, we're told, let no one deceive you by any means for that day. The day of the Lord, the second coming of Jesus Christ will not come unless the falling away comes first, which is the abandonment, the apostasy of the faith, and then the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, which is the Antichrist, the rival, his coming. There is one coming before Jesus comes, and we know Jesus is coming quickly. How much more quicker is the Antichrist coming? Because it says here, listen, verse 9, the coming, the coming. That's why I asked you to bring your Bible. You don't just take my word for it. This is not, actually, it's not my word. It's the word of God. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. According to the working of Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteousness, with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, there's going to be such unrighteous deception. Not that there's a right deception. But the deception is going to be so diabolical, so ungodly, that it's going to be directed to the unrighteous. But make no mistake about it, but you know that please don't make please don't 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 misunderstand what I'm saying because it's not just going to be directed at the unrighteous. The unrighteous is going to eat it up quick. Because they didn't love the knowledge of the truth to be saved. But the Bible tells us, Jesus himself warns us in the gospel of Matthew chapter 24, that in these times, when this, all this breaks, when all this comes quick, quick, that when these false Christs and false prophets, because listen, when the Antichrist is unveiled, okay, it's going to produce, you think, you, see, you think you've heard about false Christs? We have. You think you, you, you think you know a little something about false prophets? And believe you me, they're out there, okay? There's false Christ, there's false prophets. I mean, there's an antichrist spirit already permeating, has been permeating. Even during the times of Jesus, there were false Christ and false prophets. But you haven't seen nothing yet until the antichrist is unveiled. Because when the antichrist is unveiled and he's doing his lying signs and wonders, he's going to seek to impart and to anoint false workers of iniquity, false evangelists, false prophets, false Christ. And they're going to be deceiving, if possible, even the very elect. If it were possible, meaning they're going to be doing all sorts of card tricks. All sorts of card tricks on you. And if you, if, if, the, if you are not secure in your faith, and when these false Christs and false prophets, these false evangelists, these false witches, these, 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 these demons come out in full force, you think we've seen them now, and we have, but not in the level that's going to be when the Antichrist is unveiled. When they come out in full force to deceive, if it were possible, even the very elect, if you're not checked in your spirit, meaning that if you don't have the Holy Spirit controlling your spirit, man, if you don't know God so that you can, you know, if you don't know God to where you could carry on great exploits, and when the false Christ and false prophets that are being sent by the Antichrist, the man of sin and the son of perdition who will be revealed, unveiled himself, when he comes and he's unveiled, First, before the day of the Lord comes, before the second coming of Jesus Christ. When they seek to challenge your faith, and if you're not secure in your faith, meaning that when these things, these demons try to challenge you in human form, in human flesh, because they're going to indwell people, because these people are going to fall away from the faith. If you're not secure in your faith, you're going to take on a challenge that you, you, you were never meant to take on. When they say, listen, I'll prove it to you that this is the Messiah. And instead of saying, you know what, I don't need you to prove me nothing. I already know. Instead of saying that, you're going to give in to the lie.
You're going to give in to the temptation. You're going to give in to the, hey, let me prove it to you, to the waving of the hand. Let me prove it to you that that's the Messiah. And instead of not even acknowledging it, you're going to give in to it. You're going to say, okay, how are you going to prove it to me? Listen, you're, there are some of you right now, dear goodness, there are some of you right now that do that. You, you are so willing to be um, almost like tricked. You're so willing to, uh, okay, you know, prove it to me then. Don't say that. Don't say, prove it to me then. You don't need to be proven anything. Let him prove it to you. The devil, listen, the devil proves all sorts of stuff to you all day long if you let him. Don't take the invite. Because that's what's going to happen during this time. These t when, this, when this breaks out, in the manner that it's going to break out, the false anointing that's going to be poured out on the deceitful workers of iniquity to try to challenge you in your faith, to deceive if it were possible, even the very elect, you have to be ready now. The times of pressing and preparation and consecration and sanctification is, is now. That's why, listen, that's why the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us, don't, 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 um, here it is right here. Thank you, Lord. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23, avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. When someone wants to try to challenge you in your face, just take it right now as tribulation training. Tribulation training. Say, you know what? I'm not even going to go there. I'm not even going to go there. Because it says here, a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. Don't let it be your tribulation training now, because listen, there's coming a time that with all unrighteous deception, they're going to try to challenge your faith. I'll prove it to you that, that he is God. You're calling him the Antichrist. I prove it to you that that's the Messiah that we were waiting for. I prove it to you that that's truly Jesus Christ, or that's truly Gandhi, that's truly Buddha, whatever you want to, he's going to be, he's going to name himself everything, okay? And mean it. And then he's going to, he's going to declare himself as God Almighty, the biggest blasphemer. That's the abomination of desolation. When he does it on the temple, when he does it, when he sits in the temple of God, declaring himself as God Almighty. And so, don't give in to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Practice now. Because, folks, we're here. This was supposed to have been a quick broadcast, and I don't know how long. I don't know if it's as quick as I thought it would be. But it's all right. Don't give in to it. I don't know what else to say, but it's, it's a warning. And get saved. With all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And that's where the Lord says, and for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. That they might all be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They hated the truth. They were more pleased with being lied to. How terrible. How demonic. Get saved. Get saved and stay saved. Get saved and stay saved. I could tell you all day long to get saved. But when you get saved, stay saved. In Jesus' name. All right. The day of the Lord is at hand. Listen, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's unscheduled Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it's a privilege and an honor to bring to you the word of the Lord. Breaking, breaking world news headlines, matching biblical prophecy. If you want to get more information about who we are, what we do on our website at www openyoureyespeople.com www.openyoureyespeople.com Thank you so much and uh, help support the work of the End Time Ministry, will you? Why don't you sow a financial donation by you uh, actually sowing and, 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 and uh, was it donating? You help support the work of this End Time Ministry and I thank you in advance. If you want to write me, you can write me at P.O. Box 218 Shirts, Texas 78154 uh, Until next time, have a wonderful weekend in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.